today we're going to talk about how to install a load distribution hitch and how to set it up correctly. So your trailer may have came with a load distribution hitch and the bars and everything already installed. You know, they probably took your truck and went and installed this kind of stuff. And they may or may not have showed you how to use it, but I'm gonna show you today how to use this thing correctly. This is gonna be pretty much the same for any type of load distribution hitch that uses the bars that have the chains on it. So that is probably about half of the load distribution hitches out there are gonna have the chains. So this is gonna be pretty much universal for all of these models. We're also gonna be taking a look at how to install the sway control. That way you're not swaying down the road and you're gonna get this also set up the right way. Guys, if you like these kind of videos, hit that subscribe button, like the video as well. If you have any comments, concerns, leave those in the comment box below. And we're gonna dive into this video right now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make sure our vehicle is completely straight because if it's not straight, that's gonna throw off the angles of the bars when we go to hook them up. We're gonna back this thing up straight and then we're gonna drop the tongue of the trailer onto the ball of the hitch. If you don't have batteries that are pulling power, uh, my batteries actually are turned off right now, but I'm just gonna hook up the power supply to the vehicle. And then that's gonna give me power for my jack here. We're gonna go ahead and lower this down onto the ball of the hitch. Now we're able to put that down in the locked position and then you could go ahead and throw your pin through since I have a locked pin I'm not going to go through just for demonstration purposes and install it but that is what you would do is go ahead and put your pin in okay so now that we have the vehicle backed under we have the ball locked in to the receiver on the tongue of the trailer there now we can get our truck set up to receive the load distribution bars so what we're going to do and you're gonna to have to figure this out on your own a little bit. But essentially, you wanna see your vehicle's level already. Your trailer should be level. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and take our jack and we're gonna jack the vehicle up probably three to four inches, maybe two in certain cases, but you're gonna to have to figure this out kind of on your own. But essentially what we're gonna do, instead of it being flat right here, we're gonna raise it up in the middle. Okay, so there is more of an angle going up on both sides. Okay, the trailer's gonna be up, the vehicle's gonna be up, and then what we're gonna do is install our bars. And then in theory, when we go back down to level, all of that weight is gonna be resting on those bars and it's gonna evenly distribute the weight across all axles on your combination vehicle here. So that is in theory what is supposed to happen. So you're gonna have to play with it a little bit, some different formulas and stuff out there that some of these uh, bars come with. Uh, Camping World didn't even give me the owner's manual and stuff for my bars, but just from experience, I know how to do this. But you can go through, do those formulas, and what they pretty much consist of is measuring the space you have in your wheel wells up front, and then they go off the receiver height, they go off the tongue height, different things like that to get you set up to where you need to be for your baseline. But if you didn't have an owner's manual or whatever, you just want to wing it, this is going to get you pretty much where you need to go. All right, so we have it hooked up. We're going to go ahead and raise this thing up and show you what we're talking about. Okay, so you can see how this raised up probably three, possibly four inches. That's going to allow us to put the bars in there. And then when we go back down, all that tension is gonna be resting on those bars at parallel or level to the ground. So another thing to look at here is how straight up and down the ball is on my hitch. So since I have air suspension and stuff, I didn't really need too much of the load distribution. But if you have a truck that's really struggling to keep up the weight and stuff like that, even with the load distribution, you may want to tilt this back just a little bit more because what that's going to do is when you tilt the ball back more, which is easy, you have your angle screws and everything that you can kind of work with there to kind of adjust that. So what that's going to do when you raise your vehicle up, and you can raise it up even more than I did in this video, uh, what that's going to do is create even more of an angle 
That way when you go back down and place the tension on those bars, it's gonna provide even more load distribution. So that is another thing that you might wanna play with to get this thing dialed in for your specific needs. And also keep in mind, your trailer needs to be chopped for this as well so it's not rolling around. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get the bars installed. Essentially, all you have to do is push these up into the holes and you can hear it click in. Most models, you'll hear that click. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. This setup right here may be specific to your style of load distribution hitch, but essentially mine has a little piece right back here that was gonna grab the chain. So one thing you wanna keep in mind here is you wanna keep the same number of chain links on both sides, that way it's completely even. If you don't have this evened out, your load's not gonna be even either. So one little key right here is once you find which link you're gonna be looking for, what you need to do is go ahead and kind of rest it, rest both links down at the bottom. That way you can only focus on this link and put it up to where you wanna pull on. If you just kind of go in there like this, you're gonna have a hard time getting it in there. And also you really don't wanna go below five links. So one, two, three, four, five. You wanna have at least five Looks like we're gonna have to go on the sixth link anyway. So I'm gonna put that up there into this little piece that's gonna grab it. I'm gonna grab my breaker bar here. Go ahead and start pulling up. All right, and you can see how tight that is. And it does kind of take the tension off, but one good rule of thumb is to go ahead and keep pressure on this pry bar. That way you can go ahead and get your pin put in place. That retaining clip is gonna make sure this isn't gonna fly out. All right, so that right there is a good setup here. I'm gonna count the links again to make sure we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four, five. And on the sixth link is where we're putting it in. All right, so we moved over to the other side. Give you a little bit different camera angle here. I'll take the pins out again. Swivel this down. So you can see where we're attaching it to is gonna be this little loop that's down here. So we're gonna count six links. One, two, three, four, five, six. Once again, I'm gonna rest the excess links down at the bottom. So I'm only focusing on this link part right here. I'm gonna hold that up there, grab the pry bar. All right, and it may pop, crack, do all kinds of stuff like that because there is a ton of tension on it. And once again, I'm holding the tension on this pry bar until I get that securement pin in there. And then there we go. That load distribution hitch is in place. All right, so that's what it looks like, guys. With the bars fully seated, they're fully secured. These things are just tight as can be, guys super tight and that's what you're looking for because when this whole system you can kind of see it's kind of arced up at an angle once we take the jack stand and raise it up all of that weight is going to rest down on those load distribution bars and that is the bread and butter of this hitch system thing to keep in mind here anytime you're transitioning across your hitch here like climbing over make sure you're not going to rub against that little ball right there that's for the sway control or you rub up against the ball here if you have grease on it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and lower this down to where it's gonna be at riding height. So there it is. You can see the truck is leveled out, nice. And one thing you can do before you start is go ahead and measure the distance that you have up here with a tape measure on your fender. See how much distance is between the wheel and the fender. And then after you have this all set up, go ahead and re-measure that to see if it changed any. And if you're around an inch and a half difference, then you're probably good. Any more than that, you wanna take a look at maybe readjusting your hitch angle and stuff like that, because you can adjust the tilt of that hitch. So that might be something you wanna look at, but if the truck raises up in the front more than an inch and a half, 
uh, you take a look at it. If it doesn't, then you should be in the, the green and should be good to go. We're gonna go ahead and put our sway control. For demonstration on. purposes, I haven't taken the jack and everything up. I just have it hooked up up here just for demonstration purposes. Don't So don't hound me in the comments section for that. Uh, so essentially to hook this thing up, you're typically gonna have some pins, you know, that retain it once it's on. So you gotta take those out first. And then essentially it just has two little ball joint style couplings. So on your hitch assembly, if you have a low distribution hitch and I don't have the bars installed or anything right now either, uh, so don't hound me for that, but we're just showing you how to do the sway controller today. So you'll have like a little mini ball on your hitch and you'll also have a ball connected back here to the frame of your trailer. So what you're gonna do is take this bar and loosen it up. See how that slides freely? And then you can connect it to the ball in the back. So if you notice, I have both of these greased up because that is friction points. You're gonna wear out your controller if you don't grease that up. And then what we're gonna do is put the pins in facing the rear. All right, that way they're not gonna move out or anything like that. But these kind of swivel around anyway, so those are not gonna fall out. And do the same thing for the rear. So mine's really close, so I go from the bottom and just, and then I kind of pull it back like that. So it's not gonna go anywhere. Right now it's loose. All right, I haven't put any tension on the sway controller yet. Uh, I remember when I picked this up from Camping World, the lady came out and done a demonstration and she's like, okay, crank it down till it's tight. And then she's like, then back it off like half a turn or something like that. And I'll just tell you right now, half a turn backing this thing off just took off all that tension and all that potential sway control that we were trying to achieve. And I just remember going down the highway when I got this thing and it was just fishtailing all over the place because out here in Albuquerque, it's super windy most of the time. So that wind was just pushing me all over the place. So I got to messing with this on just a few camping trips and stuff. And I got to tightening it down like all the way. Like I'm talking to where this thing is just really tight. And I noticed when I was going down the highway, even in high winds, it wasn't moving near as much. So I knew something was was happening here. Uh, and I noticed the tighter this thing was, the better it performed. The thing to keep in mind if you're using a sway controller, you can't really back a trailer with one of these and you can't make extremely sharp turns because if you were to do that, this thing can only move so much because it's mainly made for going down the interstate and going in a straight line. If you were to make an extremely sharp turn, it's gonna pinch this thing up and bend it. So keep in mind, if you arrive at your campsite or you're gonna be making sharp turns, all you have to do is hop out of your vehicle, un uncrank this bar to relieve the tension off of it, and it's gonna be able to make it easier to turn. Because if you have this thing fully cranked down, it's gonna be making all kinds of creaks, cracks, all kinds of noise back here. And it could cause damage to the sway controller. But also keep in mind, how sharp you're turning. If you turn too sharp, you're gonna end up destroying this thing. But you can back a little bit with the tension release. So one good rule of thumb before traveling with this is that we have it completely off where this would move. There's no tension on this bar whatsoever. You go ahead and crank down to where, you know, you feel quite a bit of tension. You feel like it's not gonna to move too much. So you wanna crank down on this thing to where you feel like this a decent amount of tension on this and this is where it's going to come down to you experimenting a little with it i can't exactly tell you how many turns to crank down on this thing because it's going to be different for each one but a good amount of tension on this adjustment bar is going to let you know you're pretty good to go for traveling uh, if you have any questions and comments put those in the comment box below but this is what has worked for me traveling with this trailer so far so that's how you do a low distribution hitch we're gonna go through in just a sped up video and take all of this down and show you how that is.
Important step here, we're gonna make sure we raise this back up to take pretty much all the tension off of these chains right here. All right, so right here, the jacks touch the floor. We're gonna go ahead and raise that up to about the two or three inches above the normal ride height. That way we can go ahead and get these, the tension off these chains. All right, grab your breaker bar again. Hold tension up here, take the pin out. All right, and then kind of stand to the side to make sure you're not gonna get hit with this thing. All right, now you took the tension off. All right, pretty easy. You do that to the other side, you can take the bar down the same way we're gonna take this bar down. You kind of just swivel this thing to the front and then it'll fall out of its little hole it's in. All right, just like that. Has that little moon-shaped groove right there and once you swivel it to the front it kind of falls out of its little groove but yeah you do that to the other side and you have your load distribution hitch fully taken down and you're ready to store this thing away so guys hopefully you like this video on how to properly set up your load distribution hitch this isn't a video that shows you how to install it typically your dealership or wherever you pick up your travel trailer will install it for you typically they include that as included price or whatever in the overall cost of your asset but this is just to go ahead and show you how to set this thing up and get it set up properly so that you can travel safely down the road making sure everything is distributed equally across all wheels on this combination vehicle all right guys if you like this go ahead and leave a like also subscribe to the channel we'd love to have you and i'm going to be posting a lot more camper related travel trailer videos in the future and definitely some things on my mind about camping world so stay tuned for those guys head over to my main channel page check out a bunch of videos i have over there because i will catch you in future videos thanks for watching